Okay, I think I, I think I got it under control. I don't, no. <laughs> I'm like, should I keep that in? I think I should, because it's hilarious. So you can see what I'm dealing with. It's called a two-year-old. Do you hear him? Hi guys, and welcome back. It is Wednesday. That means it's time for Get Ready With Me in History, where I get, do my makeup. It's actually Sunday, but you know where I do my makeup and we get ready and we talk, I talk, you listen, about um, history. And I've already filmed this thing once before. I'm gonna be talking about the Salem Witch Trials, which, you know, whenever I mention that, I'm gonna put that on my YouTube. Ooh, what do you mean? I feel, I got the thickest wig I got. <laughs> Cause my hair is thin because I have trichotillomania. So it's, you know, weird having thick hair to me. Um, so with that being said, I will link all the products that I'm using in the description down below. This is, um, something that I've been wanting to do. I just did another video not too long ago about Hatchup Soot, and I believe I released that last Wednesday. Yes. So today we're talking about the Salem Witch Trials. There's going to be a lot of names thrown at you. It's okay. <laughs> and feel free. I will link to you know, where I get my research from, if there's any pictures, I'll link to where they're from, all that stuff. You know, this is part of American history. <sighs> 200 people were accused, 30 of them were found guilty, and 19 of them were hung. Two of them died in prison, jail, and one person was pressed to death with stones. Um, it's a sad situation all around, um, based on hysteria, really. Uh, <laughs> what else can you say about it? Yeah, exactly, thank you. My two-year-old is getting mad at his box. If you hear him scream, that's why. What you doing? My seven-year-old is sitting here keeping me company. So, without any further ado, let's go ahead and get started, right? I'm shaky today. Did I eat breakfast? I think I ate this morning really, really, but early. <laughs> There's a mirror right here in front of me, so if I'm looking this way, it's probably because I'm looking at a mirror. I also have this one here, so. And again, I'll link to everything, including my wig, in the description down below. Okay, so let's start in the beginning. So the Puritans actually got their start over in England, and they came to America to flee religious prosecution. Um, from the Church of England and all that stuff. <laughs> Look at that. Oh. oh my gosh, my two-year-old is having a conniption fit. Okay, don't open that door. Oh, he's mad at life, my two-year-old. Anyway, um, <laughs> so Puritan Salem, they came over. They came from England in 1630. They settled in the Massachusetts Bay Colony. They came over in 17 ships and just a thousand settlers, colonists, colonists. And they settled originally in the Massachusetts Bay Colony. In 20 years, yes. there would be, or I'm sorry, 10 years, 10 years. Why am I thinking 20 years? I'm thinking 20,000 and putting it together. So 20,000 um, people. 20,000, a population of 20,000 and um, 20,000 people 10 years later. Ooh. And then they would start to flood into um, what is called Salem Village. Salem Village was established in 1626 by English settlers. So that was established by English, 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 English. English settlers, English settlers, the English, the English, <laughs> I'm stuck on that. The English settlers, and then of course the Puritans would come in there and start the, wow, what are you doing? Hi, hi, you okay? My two year old's mad at his blocks. You okay? You're tired. You did not sleep. I was so I know, but you didn't sleep last night. We're having a conversation now. He and I. Okay, so. Um, so <laughs> I have kids, they said. It would be fun, they said. 
I'm not even holding you. Why do I need to put you down? Okay, so anyway, in 1630, they had an influx of the Puritan colonists, and the Puritan colonists really had no religious tolerance at all. So that they, they did not, um, but they did have, you know, their own arts, their own music, their own literature, their own way of life. Like you could not on Sundays do anything. It was the Lord's day, you couldn't do anything. And that's one thing I remember about in school, specifically that you were not allowed to do anything on Sunday. All right, so <clears throat> where did I leave off? <sighs> By the way, the witch trials that were going on in Europe were starting to lose their, you know, popularity, I guess I should say their popularity by the time that the Salem witch trials would have happened. There was some that were pretty bad that happened in England. Um, and I'll cover that a different day. I'm not going to talk about it today because, you know, it's about Salem today. I know what you got there. Here you go. Here's some more stuff. Um, so it's about, um, Salem today. <laughs> You got me? Yeah, feel me? Oh, why? So, there was actually in 1668 a treatise written by Joseph Glanville called Against Modern Seducism. Seducism. I'm probably pronouncing that way wrong, but you know, it's called the Theology Against Against Modern Seducism. Um, so basically, it's about um, proving the existence of witches, spiritual apparitions, demons, the supernatural world. How people didn't think that he was a witch, I don't know, because <laughs> that just seems like what you would pick up in like a any occult shop today. Oh, that sounds interesting. But anyway, it was something where he wrote that he could prove it. And, um, you know, if you denied the existence, you were considered a heretic and against God in his eyes that, you know, the ingenious man should believe in that kind of stuff. So, you know, again, this goes on there. This is part of their literature, you know, their works of art, that kind of stuff. What are you doing? Here, what are you going to do with that? Are you, are you helping? Are you being big helper? I hope so. <laughs> my two year old's like, I'm trying to help. My other son was trying to run off with my he wanted to pretend it was paint. So, okay. My stomach's growling. Is yours? Is your tummy growling? Mine is. My tummy's growling. So. Okay, here. Play with this one. Play with this stuff. There's more stuff in here. Okay. He keeps taking my brushes too. So, there's allegedly a hurricane outside or a tropical storm. I just don't see it because it's just not happening. Where's my lightning brush? Here it is. Where's my... <laughs> my kids are taking in. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Where is everything? Uh, okay. Okay, so... <laughs> so anyway... So all the works that were by Glanville and a man called Cotton Mathers, you'll hear his name a little bit more later on, you know, we're constantly trying to prove the existence of demons, witches, the supernatural, ghosts, all that kind of stuff. So they were constantly trying to prove that stuff. So what is it about matte powder that eyeshadow that's just like like it's Christmas <laughs> like you just had a beignet 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 that little pastry puff coated in powdered sugar and you're like everywhere okay so anyway here we go I'm just like messing up that eyeshadow left and right here I'm like, yeah. my son is making some weird noises are you a witch making weird noises. So the trial started around 17 girls. Like um, the 17 girls were, okay, <laughs> Elizabeth Howard. I see. Okay, so 
she gave her first testimony on January 7th of 16, the last testimony, I'm sorry. She gave her last testimony on January 7th, 1693, okay? And she filed up to 40 legal complaints, 32 testimonies against, um, and as a result, 17 people were arrested, 13 were executed by hanging, and two people died in jail, prison, jail, prison, whatever. It was a jail, a jail cell. <laughs> yeah, so seven, 13 people were executed because of her testimonies. But again, she wasn't the only one, and during some of the trial, other people would name names as a way to probably lessen their charges, which didn't happen. It, it never really happened. They would either just start, just sit in jail or they would just be hung anyway. Because you're still a witch. <laughs> you know, there, there are forms of getting them to admit things was pretty rough back then. Um, so anyway. <sighs> I'm getting off topic. <sighs> And um, there were some people that were as young as, oh my God, they're on my night notes. There were some people that were as young as four years old getting um, accused and arrested for witchcraft. Four, four years old. That's awfully young, <laughs> you think? You're getting makeup. <laughs> over my dress. I'm gonna have to give you a bath again. I know, I see. Whatever's keeping you happy right now, I guess. That's a horrible thing for me to say, but it's the truth. Okay, so you, you have that. I'll hold this. Thank you. Where's my foundation now? Okay. Okay, so. Now, the start of this whole thing. So Abigail and her cousin, Betty, Abigail was like 14, Betty was nine, okay? And they, one of them was the daughters of the respected Reverend Samuel Paris. Actually, it was Betty, she was his daughter. So anyway, a reverend. And they began to have their fits. Again, they threw things, they screamed, they made weird sounds, they yelled, they hollered, they contorted, they did a bunch of just like weird, <laughs> weird stuff, right? So they did the weirdness. Oh, I got foundation all over my fingers, that's special. So, you know, they they did all this and he recorded this. He note, made note of it. I'm gonna try, ooh, you guys just saw my thing. I thought I cut that, whatever. This is a hot mess, <laughs> considering. Ooh, that's a lot of foundations. That's okay, I'll sponge it. So anyway, he recorded this and um, he made accounts and he was, he bared witness to this. Um, and so there was also accounts by another eyewitness and that was Reverend Diodat Lawson. Diodat Lawson. He also, <laughs> see, you see this? Wow, stuff. That's a lot of you're looking a bit vampire-y. Mm. I've been using the IL Maquillage Foundation and I haven't used this one in a while because of it. So, <laughs> this is a, a treat. Wow, look at that. <laughs> okay, well, I'll just scoop that off with my brush. Where's my sponge at? Okay, so amongst the first accused was Sarah Good, Sarah Osborne, 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 Tituba, and you know she was Tituba was actually the very first, and um, she was an enslaved South American Indian or from the West Indies. Um, and she was a target because, mostly because of her ethnic background. And she was accused also because she was accused of attacking 
the young girls like Abigail and Betty by telling them stories about enchantments from the Malleus Malachorium. Malforium. Whoa. Malforium. And from these are tales about sexual encounters with demons, um, swaying the minds of men, charms, palm reading or whatever, telling fortunes. And it was, you know, st stimulating their minds and imaginations. And then there was good, you know, who was a destitute lady and she was accused of witchcraft because she was rejecting the Puritan way of life. Boo hoo, right? Sarah Osborne, on the other hand, didn't hardly ever attend church, and it was believed that she had her own self-interest at heart when she remarried to an indentured servant, and people did not appreciate the fact that she was trying to take control of her son's inheritance from a previous marriage. Also, Anne, you know, some believe that all of this, not Anne, but some people believe that most of this started because of a family feud between um, the Putnams and Porters. And this is based on testimonies by Ann Putnam Jr. Apparently the feuds were so bad, people would get into fights, like fist fights and stuff over this. So, I mean, it is possible that that happened. It is really possible that that is the reason why behind all the trials. Ooh, you're just gonna get another bath. Okay, so. Okay, like I said, so each of the women were targets because they had, you know, different backgrounds and they were, they had to defend themselves before the local magistrate on accusations of witchcrafts. And the interrogations would last several days, starting March 1st, 1692, and then they were sent to jail. Then came others, Martha Corey, Dorothy Good. She was four years old, the daughter of Sarah and William Good. And she was brought in because they saw bites all over her arms. So when she was being interrogated, they asked, where did these bites come from? And she finally on investigation told them why. Um, her mother gave her a snake and she said the snake would bite her fingertips and suck her blood. The snake was probably just biting her and she was bleeding from a result. And she was just bleeding as a result of being bitten by a snake. Let's just call it how it is. Um, unless there is such a thing as vampiric um, snakes, um, I think it was mostly due to the fact that the snake was just biting her. But anyway, because it was a gift from her mother, and her mother was already on trial for witchcraft, they assumed that the snake, I'm really shaky, the snake was a um, familiar. So what a familiar is, according to the Puritans, is a spiritual advisor or spiritual apparition that has been given flesh and they assist witches and so because of that um, they assumed that that snake was like that so little Dorothy Good was in prison from March of 16 Yes, she was from March 24, 1692 to December 10th of 1692. And she was able to get out because they made bail of 50 pounds. So she was released on bail for 50 pounds. So she was, she was let go after that. So she was let go. Okay. Then again. There was others, Rebecca Nurse in Salem Village and Rachel Clinton in Ipswich was accused of witchcraft or conspiracy to commit witchcraft. And I, so it got really dark all of a sudden because of tropical storm, yay! So, um, Martha Corey, thought that the whole accusations for this was just absolutely ridiculous. She thought that they were just 
looking for attention and she didn't believe that any of this was real it had no merit it there was no reason for any of this to be going on and so yeah so she we okay we <laughs> and that they were looking for our attention. My kids are distracting me. And their accusations were troubling because one of them, Martha, was a full member of the church, as was Rebecca. And the situation is, if they can be witches, then anybody can be witches, even if they're members of the church. They are not immune to writing their names in the devil's book. So Sarah Cloyce, nurse's sister, Elizabeth Proctor, were then arrested in April both were brought before magistrates John Hawthorne and Jonathan Corwin in Salem, and both men were also on the governor's council. Present was also the deputy governor of the time, Thomas Danforth, and his assistants, Samuel Saywell, Samuel Appleton, James Russell, and Isaac Addington. Now, during Elizabeth's trial, her husband, um, John Proctor, kept jumping up and objecting. He kept opening his mouth and screaming out, no, this is wrong, this is wrong, I object and he was then arrested for witchcraft. <laughs> so he was then arrested. I should not be laughing. It's just the whole thing is ridiculous. So he was then arrested for witchcraft. Within a week, Giles Corey, Martha's husband, Abigail Hobbs, Bridget Bishop, Mary Warren, um, a servant in the Proctor household, by the way. Mary Warren. And um, sometimes she was also an accuser. It's okay. Deliverance Hobbs. Abigail Hobbs' stepmother were all arrested and sent through the examinations. All but Bridget confessed and named more names. And they all, you know, they always tend to do that during torture <laughs> or whatever they went through. And then more arrests happened. Sarah Wills, William Hobbs, um, and he is the husband of Deliverance and um, father to Abigail. Naemia Abbott Jr., that's that's actually a man. I was like, Naemia. Hmm. I, I read um, Throne of Glass and there was a character by that name in there. Anyway, Mary Eastie, Ed, Edward Bishop Jr. and his wife, Sarah Mary English. English. On April 30th, Reverend George Burroughs, Lydia Dustin, Savannah, Susanna Martin, Dorcas Hoar, Sarah Morey, and Philip English were all arrested on the charges of witchcraft or the um, accusations to commit witchcraft or the conspiracy to commit witchcraft. Naemia was released because the accuser said he was innocent. Mary Eastie was released after her initial arrest due to innocence, but then the group apparently changed their minds. They said, no, you know what? We think you're still a witch, so we're just going to go ahead and try you again. So she was rearrested. <laughs> In May, more accusations flooded in, but suspects were starting to evade arrest. They were starting to run for the hills. They were not gonna stick around. Um, warrants were issued before John Willard and Elizabeth Colson were arrested. George Jacobs Jr. and Daniel Andrews got away. But until this point, all proceedings were investigative. Then on May 22, 1692, Williams Phipps ordered the establishment of the Special Court of Oyer and Terminer for Suffolk, Suffolk, Essex, and Middlesex counties to start prosecutions on those who were already jailed. More warrants started to be issued, and Sarah Osborne unfortunately died May 10, 1692. She died in jail. She was one of the first accused and she died in jail. Eyebrows. And then I need a new eyeliner and highlighter and all that jazz. Okay, here we go. 36 more people were then issued warrants. Oh, what the hell did I just do? 36 more people were issued warrants for their arrests and for examinations to see if they were 
afflicted or if they were in fact witches or if they signed the devil's book and that means that of course they're a witch and all that jazz. Oh, so these people are Sarah Dustin and Sears, but Thia Karp Sr. Thia Karp Sr. Where is my eyeliner? Thia Karp Sr. I'm going to say her name again. And her daughter, Bethia Carter Jr. George Jacobs Sr. and his granddaughter, Mary Margaret Jacobs, John Willard, Alice Parker, and Pudaker, 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 Eater, Abigail Soames, and George Jacobs Jr.'s Daniel, Daniel, Daniel Andrew, Rebecca Jacobs, Sarah Buckley, and her daughter, Mary Witheridge. Also, Elizabeth Colson, Elizabeth Hart, Thomas Farrar Sr., Roger Toothtaker, Sarah Proctor, Sarah Bassett, Susanna Roots, Mary DeRich, Sarah Peace, Elizabeth Carey, Martha Carrier, Elizabeth uh, Fosdick, Will Red, William, Wilmot Red, I'm sorry, Sarah Rice, Elizabeth Howe, Captain John Alden, William Proctor, Mary Toothtaker, John Flood, Margaret Toothtaker, and Arthur Abbott. More names. <laughs> When the court of Boyer and Terminer convened at the end of May, the total number of people in custody was 62 people. They had 62 people in custody. I probably shouldn't do eyeliner while being so shaky. But here we go. So, Cotton Mather at this time wrote a letter to one of the judges issuing a little bit of a warning, but also um, support. So it's like a, a both, I guess. I don't know, it didn't really seem like a warning to me. It was just, you know, like, that, you know, that old English. Yeah, I know. So on May 31st, 19, 1692, um, it said, do not lay more stress on pure spectral evidence than it will bear. I don't know. On, six, on June 2nd, 1692, Bridget Bishop's case was brought to the grand jury, and she was accused of not only being a witch, but also being unpuritan based on law. Oh, based on how she dressed. It was just based on how she dressed. So they're just like, you dress weird, so we don't like you, so we're going to execute you. <laughs> the grand jury endorsed the indictments on June 3rd. On her, um, she was found guilty, actually, yes. And on June 3rd, the grand jury endorsed indictments on, um, on Rebecca Nurse and John Willard, but they did not go to trial immediately. However, as for bishops, she was executed by hanging on June 10th, 1692. And the court adjourned for 20 days and didn't come back until June 30th. It also sought advice from New England's most influent ministers upon the state of things as they stood. The collective response came back dated June 15th and was composed by again Cotton Mather. And after reading this letter, Major Nathaniel Saltonsall resigned. He was dissatisfied with the whole thing and he just could not stand how it was not bearing any type of evidence. And he condemned the whole trial. More people were accused, arrested and examined but now in salem town by formal local magistrates and they were john hawthorne jonathan corwin bartholomew gedney and they became the judges and at this time suspected roger toothtaker unfortunately died in prison my kids are chasing each other <laughs> from june 30th to early july the grand jurors endorsed the indictments of sarah good Elizabeth Howe, Susanna Martin, Elizabeth Proctor, John Proctor, Martha Carrier, still Sarah Wilds, and Dorcas Moore. Those that went to trial were Sarah Good, Elizabeth Howe, Susanna Martin, and Sarah Wills and Rebecca Nurse. They were all declared guilty and all five of them were executed by hanging on July 19th, 1692. Mid-July, a constable in Andover asked the afflicted to come and look at his wife because he was having similar symptoms to what they were having. Then Ann Foster, her daughter Mary Lacey Sr. Jr. and granddaughter Mary Lacey all, Jr. all confessed to witchcraft at that time. So they confessed. They're like, yeah, we, we are. At this point, what, what else could they do? Nothing else would, it, no one would believe them, even if they said they weren't. Then in August, grand juries indicted George Burroughs, Mary Eastie, Martha Corey, and George Jacobs Sr. 
the trial judges, juries convicted Martha Carrier, George Jacobs Sr., George Burroughs, and John Willard, Elizabeth Proctor, and John Proctor. But Elizabeth got a temporary reprieve because it was discovered that she was actually pregnant. So they, she got a reprieve due to pregnancy. They would not hang a woman with an unborn child. And she's not the only one. Okay, so more names are about to happen. Here we go. <laughs> On August 19th, 16, 16, or yeah, 1692, Martha Carrier, George Jacobs Sr., George Burroughs, John Willard, and John Proctor were all executed by hanging. In September 20th, the grand juries indicted not 18 more people, but they, appeared, they failed to indict Will Proctor, but he was rearrested on new charges later. September 19th, 1692, Giles Corey refused to plead at his arraignment, and he was also killed by pianoforte et dur, which is torture by being killed by being pressed to, get to death by large stones. It is a very, very painful, slow way to die. It took them two days. He never confessed, and he was suffocated by the rocks. So basically, they put more pressure on you by putting more rocks in hopes that they will get a confession, and he never confessed, so he died by being squished and suffocated. <sighs> On September 22nd, 1692, eight more people were executed for witchcraft. After this, the execution, Mr. Noyes said, what a sad, sad, what a sad, sad thing it is to see eight firebrands of hell hanging there, end quote. Dorcas Hoare was given temper proof because it was discovered that she got help from the ministers for her confession. So she got a temper proof. And then Mary Bradbury, who was 77, she managed to escape with the help of family. Abigail Faulkner Sr. temp reprieve due to pregnancy as well. The governor at this point called an end to the trials in October of 1692. He was done with it. He's like, okay, there is no evidence. There is no basis in science for this. There's no reason for this. This needs to end. Not only that, but his own wife was accused, and it was after she was accused that he called an end to it all. Coincidence? The first five cases of January 1693 were of five people who were indicted in September, but not yet tried. Sarah Buckley, Margaret Jacobs, Rebecca Jacobs, Mary Witheridge, and Jake Cooley all were found not guilty. Charges were dismissed of many, but 16 more were indicted and tried. Three were found guilty, Elizabeth Johnson Jr., Sarah Warnwell, and Mary Post, but Governor Phipps pardoned them after receiving their execution warrants. So he's, he gets this and he's like, okay, what? I thought I called an end to this. They're pardoned. However, in late January, early February, five more people were tried. Sarah Cole, Lydia Dustin, Sarah Dustin, Mary Taylor, and Mary Toothaker were all found not guilty. However, they still had to pay their jail fees. And Lydia Dustin unfortunately died. Lydia Dustin all unfortunately died in jail on March 10, 1693. So that's actually three people that died in jail. Three people died in jail. I was wrong, I'm sorry. In Boston, Captain John Alden was cleared and it heard charges against Mary Watkins for falsely accusing her mistress of witchcraft and many courts convened in Ipswich at this time. So it's starting to come to an end, finally. They dismissed the charges of all but five people, Susanna Post, Eunice Fry, Mary Bridges Jr., Mary Barker, and Will Barker Jr. were all found not guilty, thus bringing um, an end to the dark part of American history. One dark part. Now, after this, what happened to the girls? Well, one of them wrote a, a long letter begging for forgiveness from her church and members of the community saying that she was under the devil's influence and they forgave her. Um, I'm not really sure what happened to everybody else. I didn't really look. I probably should have. I'm lazy. But many of the families tried to get some form of compensation for the wrongful accusations of their family in the 1700s. But 
Many of them were denied, or if they did get any type of compensation, it was very little, and it doesn't replace the loss of life for the innocent people that were mur basically murdered, I guess. Um, not many people were given any type of pardons, and it wasn't until 300 years later for the 300th year an anniversary that they were finally cleared of all their charges by the Massachusetts Legislation Pakistan Act declaring everything, um, declaring them basically all not guilty. It took 300 years. Many people were not given burials. Most people were, were put into a mass grave. Their family members had to dig through the dead bodies to find their own family members and then erect graves. Many of them do not have marked graves. Sad. Family members put together funds to get um, some form of grave set up so the families could pay their respects and grieve. Um, some places um, erected monuments to those who lost their lives in um, places in Massachusetts, but again, at the time no one really did much except for the families who went after dark. They went in the dark to go and get their family members out of the mass graves to give them a proper burial. And then again, many people were not found. They didn't get any sort of burial. So, yeah. That's horrible, isn't it? But that is the Salem Witch Trials. A sad, sad situation. People not being held accountable on top of it all. And the families having to dig through dead bodies in a mess grave trying to find their loved ones to give them a proper burial to give them a site sad sad situation but that is the end of it <laughs> you know um you know just what can you say it's just it's part of history and unfortunately that is part of it and you you know you learn from it right <laughs> you learn from it so Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to like and, the, the, the like and subscribe. If you like makeup and you like history, be sure to like and subscribe. Follow along. I'm going to post these every Wednesday. So thank you so much for sitting and learning about the Salem Witch Trials with me. And I hope that you take care of each other. And thank you for stopping by and being my neighbor today. And I'm going to go eat some food because I'm starving. And go see what the heck they're doing. I think they're wrestling around and throwing, destroying the bed. <laughs> Thank you so much and have a great, great day.